from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight on the news, today is primary election day here in Lincoln. We're going to have a live report from a polling place and all the information you need to know. Plus, put your phone down. Lincoln police will be cracking down on distracted driving. But first, in an extraordinary court moment, former President Donald Trump appearing for his arraignment today. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. It marks the first time in American history that a U.S. president, current or former, has faced criminal charges. Trump coming before a judge and learning the dozens of counts in the indictment against him. The 45th president ultimately pleading not guilty. ABC's M. Wynn is at the New York Supreme Court in Lower Manhattan where Trump's arraignment took place. A historic moment as for the first time a former president of the United States turns himself in after being indicted by a Manhattan grand jury. Donald Trump facing 34 felony counts of falsifying business records stemming from alleged 2016 hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels, allegedly claiming the payments as an ordinary legal expense. Prosecutors will say that this was a payment made to help his campaign. The reason you can elevate it from a misdemeanor to a felony is by saying that the falsification of the business records was done in an effort to conceal another crime. The former president and now a criminal defendant walking the halls of the New York State Supreme Court, escorted by the Secret Service. Prior to his arraignment, Trump preparing with his lawyers inside Trump Tower, one person describing the former president as resigned to the fact that this day has finally come. Trump arrested, fingerprinted and processed, appearing before Judge Juan Merchant, whom the former president has repeatedly attacked as a Trump-hating judge. Comments some say is a legally risky move and an accusation his own lawyer wouldn't repeat. No, I don't believe the judge is biased. I mean, the president's entitled to his own opinion. Video cameras were not allowed inside the court room, but the judge did allow still photographers to take pictures before the unprecedented arraignment began. Trump pleading not guilty to all charges. And just outside the courthouse, hundreds gathered in dueling protests. People close with the former president say he wanted to get this over with and return to Florida as quickly as possible. He's already slated to give remarks at Mar-a-Lago later tonight. M. Wynn, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, it's primary election day in Lincoln. Some of the big races include for mayor and city council. Election officials saw a high participation in early voting. Channel 8's Veronica Barreto joins us live now with more. Veronica. That's right, Megan and Rod. Officials are expecting a 35% participation rate for today's election. They say it's mostly because of an interest in early voting. Election officials say they were expecting fewer in-person voters. This because early voting ballots more than doubled the amount that was sent during the city's election of 2019. The Lancaster County Election Commissioner says this has been an option more people have been getting familiar with. So we mailed out 34,000 ballots to early voters. Um, and so we've gotten about 28,000 back thus far. So just the early vote, we've seen an increase in participation. Because of the record numbers on early voting, the turnout of today's election is expected to be slightly higher than the 2019 mayoral race and way higher than the 2021 primary election. And coming up at 6 o'clock, I'll have much more on this story and also on some bills in the legislature targeting early voting. Reporting live in Lincoln, Veronica Barreto, Channel 8 News. All right, Veronica, we'll talk to you at 6 o'clock. Thank you for the live report. We are getting closer to closing time at the polling places, which are open today from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the first results are going to be coming in right around that closing time again at 8 p.m. Channel 8's Mackenzie Johnson joins us live at another polling place to tell us more. Mackenzie? 
Yeah, that's right, Rod and Megan. I'm here at a polling place, New Visions United Methodist Church near 11th and Garfield Streets. The steady stream of voters has started to pick up here in the last half hour as people come to cast their ballots for the Lincoln City Mayor and City Council and City Council members. There are four City Council seats that are up for grabs, but the only candidate up for re-election is James Michael Bowers. Now, the three candidates for Lincoln Mayor are State Senator Suzanne Geist, Stan Parker, and our current and our current Lincoln Mayor, Lyrian Gaylor Baird. Now, both Geist and Parker are registered as Republicans, but B Gaylor Baird is a registered Democrat. However, all three of them are going to show up in the same section on your ballot as it is a nonpartisan ballot. So only the two candidates who get the most votes are going to be moving on to the ballots for the general election, which is coming up here on May 2nd. So if you need help and you want to find a sample ballot or if you need to find your polling place, you can visit our website, klkntv.com, for all that information. We're going to be getting the first round of results from early voting coming in around 8 o'clock, which is right when these polling places are going to be closing. So if you want to find those results, you can keep updated on our website or you can watch our newscasts at 6 and 10 o'clock and we'll be keeping you updated with all those results. Reporting at 11th and Garfield Streets, I'm Mackenzie Johnson, Channel 8 News. Mackenzie, thank you very much for that live report. Great information for everyone. Well, not bad weather today to vote, but uh, Rusty, I know you're keeping an eye on a lot of different things going on in the Midwest. Yeah, there's uh, severe thunderstorms just off to our east, a lot of heat around here, much colder and snow just off to our west. So there's a lot going on. Here's what it looks like uh, on our uh, satellite and radar. There's all the snow towards Cherry County and just north of North Platte and then all that severe weather just to our east. And it's not far from us either. It's only 90 miles east of us. And uh, those storms popped up very quickly about an hour ago and are now moving to uh, the north and east. Uh, so they should stay out of our area, but boy, they are really close. They just just kind of grazed uh, Richardson County. Now we have winter weather advisories, blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings in place into Wednesday. So uh, if you have any plans to travel west, just know that you could run into quite a bit of snow. There's already been almost a foot of snowfall in some parts of the panhandle uh, and there's still some more out there. Outside in Beatrice, it's a comfortable a mixture of clouds and sun and temperatures already cooling off 70 in Beatrice, 78 degrees or 76 in Wymore, but it's still 91. 91 degrees in Falls City. Zooming out though a little bit, it's 59 in Lincoln. It was 70 just a couple hours ago, so colder air already starting to pool in. 30s and 20s just off to the north and northwest. The wind is out of the northwest for just about all of us at 20 to 30 miles per hour. As we head through tonight, temperatures drop quickly into the 30s and that wind will start to pick up anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour as we head through the overnight. So the summer light conditions are just about done and we're going to have just a quick taste of winter as we head through the day tomorrow. We'll have a look at that forecast in a few. Boy, just the difference between Northwest Nebraska and what we have here, incredible, mm -hmm. right? Some we see this time of the year. Thank you, Rusty. Have you ever found yourself distracted by your phone while you're driving? Well, law enforcement across the country, including here in Nebraska, say they'll be cracking down on distracted driving during the month of April. Channel 8's Matthew Mitleider joins us in studio with more. Matthew? If you've ever found yourself not watching the road while behind the wheel of your car, you could be putting yourself in danger. A number of law enforcement initiatives are being put on this month to help reduce reduce distracted driving and ultimately prevent deadly accidents. Over 3,500 people were killed in distracted driving crashes nationwide in 2021, uh, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Police say here in Lincoln they'll be monitoring specific intersections over the next few weeks to catch distracted drivers who are violating traffic signals and stop those crashes from happening. If you are traveling at a speed of 55 miles per hour, and you just look away for five seconds, you are traveling over the course of an entire football field during that time. Uh, where your eyes are not on the road, you are not seeing the changes in traffic, you are not able to respond to anything. The Lancaster County Sheriff's Office and Nebraska State Patrol are also participating in their own initiatives to spread awareness and watch for dangerous driving. LPD says teens and young adults are actually more likely to get into an accident due to distracted driving than older generations, despite being more tech savvy. I'll have more on the story tonight at 6. Looking forward to the rest of your story tonight, Matthew. Thank you very much. In other news now, the Center for People is hosting its Opening Doors Job Seeking Workshop. That's right. The goal of the three-day event is to help those who used to be behind bars get a job. Organizers say it allows those formerly incarcerated to take part in mock interviews and preparation classes. It also prepares them for resume building alongside how to address their past in interviews. 
we understand that there's sometimes a stigma that um, incarceration is the end of the road. But here at the Center for People, we see it as new beginnings. And come out here, create a resume, get some things under your belt, and join the workforce because there's room for everybody. And today the opening door event was for females only and went from 2 to 4 this afternoon. Tomorrow is for men only and Thursday will be a hiring event. More information can be found on our website, klkntv.com. Now new details on a fire that destroyed a home near 20th and Groveland. Officials say it was sparked by an electrical short. The fire inspector went to the scene this morning to determine the extent of damages. Firefighters were called to the home around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. A spokesperson with LFR says this one was tricky to get under control. When we arrive on location and there's that much fire, um, we will begin our, our, our operations from the outside and um, kind of knock down the, the majority of the fire so that we're able to see exactly how to approach and then we'll go inside. Thankfully, no one was injured, but the house is a total loss. We also have new details on another house fire yesterday afternoon here in Lincoln, this one near 18th and A. Officials say six people had to be relocated from the blaze. LFR says the cause was electrical. When crews arrived, they found smoke coming from the basement of the structure. The fire was mitigated pretty quickly by fire crews. Um, the fire was contained to the basement of the structure. Officials say there were about $30,000 worth of damage to the structure and $10,000 to the contents. Uh, there were no injuries in this fire as well. Well, overnight, a house fire broke out in Grand Island, causing massive damage. The Grand Island Rural Fire Department had to call for additional units to help with the blaze because of those high winds. Here's video from the scene. The department says the wind gusts made the scene especially dangerous. Units from three other towns helped to contain the fire within minutes, but crews did remain on scene for quite a while in case of any hot spots. No word on any injuries or total damage. Now to crime news in Lincoln. A man is behind bars for threatening a convenience store employee with a box cutter. Police say 41-year-old Jason Benson bought food from the Super C near 17th and L. They say he became angry when he was told he couldn't eat the food in the store. And they say he pulled out a knife and attacked the victim. But police say the box cutter folded on itself and cut Benson instead. All right, let's go to Grand Island. A woman is accused of hiding her four-year-old son from police, even though he had possibly been poisoned. This happened Monday afternoon. Officers were joined by the fire department to check on the boy who had eaten a Delta 8 TCH gummy. But they say Ashley Hensley took her children from the apartment after hearing authorities were on the way. Well, the boy was eventually found and taken to a hospital while Hensley was arrested for intentional child abuse. Meanwhile, in Merrick County, authorities are searching for this man, Wyatt Barrett. He's wanted for third degree domestic assault and strangulation. If you have any information on his whereabouts, call the Merrick County Sheriff's Office. The number is 308-946-2345. Authorities are also investigating two cases of vandalism at local churches. In Webster County, the Sheriff's Office says two fire extinguishers were sprayed and an office door was broken at the Zion Lutheran Church in Red Cloud. Now to Syracuse, State Senator Julie Slama is sharing photos of a vandalism at St. Paulinus Catholic Church. She says an altar was flipped and someone took the altar stone and shattered it. Still to come on the news tonight, 95 million people are under the threat of severe weather across the country. We'll have the latest on that and your full forecast coming up right after the break. You notice it.
snow and whiteout conditions are possible in several states across the Midwest. In fact, 95 million people are under the threat of intense tornadoes, winds, and hail through Wednesday. And that includes some spots in Nebraska. This comes just four days after more than 80 tornadoes tore through communities across 14 different states. It was the largest outbreak of tornadoes in the last three years. Iowa confirmed an EF4 touching down. The funnel grew to 600 yards across with winds blowing up to 170 miles per hour. This man went through the storm and survived. Yeah, 100% did think I was going to die. Once I saw the winds pick up the way they did. According to the National Weather Service, we've had at least 63 tornado deaths already this year, which is nearly the average seen in an entire year. President Biden has declared parts of the country major disaster areas, making federal funding and resources available to those affected. No. Your Storm Alert Team Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Rusty Dawkins. In southeast Nebraska, we're kind of in between a couple of uh, different things that are happening, and uh, it's quiet. Lots of sunshine, temperatures well above average today. We're starting to see those cool off, but uh, it's it's an interesting setup. Where we're at in southeast Nebraska from Lincoln uh, to about Falls City, it's in, I'll, I'll show you here. There's a lot of things going on right now. First and foremost, temperature difference. Again, this is the middle ground right here. Wahoo, Lincoln, Friend, Hebron. Everything south and east of there, much warmer. 91 in Falls City, 80 in Nebraska City, 70 in Beatrice. And then 30s just over here from Kearney to Grand Island, Central City, Columbus at 42, Aurora at 39 degrees. So that's just one part of this. Uh, the other part is the wind. This has been out of, it's now out of the north for just about everybody. Fall City though, 18 miles per hour out of the south. And again, 91 degrees. So that's part of the reason there. But that colder air is starting to funnel down and will continue. Also, we're kind of in between well, we're more to the east of the snowfall. The snow is way off to the west, Valentine, Cherry County, and then areas like Grant County, uh, Hooker County, uh, Thomas County also seeing some light snow and then tracking just down to the south and west into parts of Colorado. And then that severe weather activity just off the screen into parts of southwestern Iowa and northwestern Missouri. And we're in the middle with plenty of sunshine. So again, we're just kind of in the middle of everything that seems to be happening and we'll continue right here. The middle snow to the west, strong storms to the east. As we head through tonight, look at that line of storms just building from Kansas City up to Des Moines. Could see some uh, strong to severe weather out of this. Tornadoes a possibility again. This is 930 Tuesday. Snow kind of taking a break to the north and west. And then everything kind of shuts down snow wise as we head into the overnight into early Wednesday morning. Still some strong storms off to our east and then that should just about do it. I think by Wednesday morning, partly cloudy skies, much cooler. Temperatures are going to take a break. We're not looking at a whole lot of uh, very warm temperatures, at least through the day tomorrow. And then as we head into the uh, afternoon for Wednesday, more clouds to the north, more sunshine to the south and east. Not a terrible day. It's just going to be so much cooler, well, for some of us, than it has been the last couple of days. By 5 p.m. Wednesday, I think most of us will see sunshine and a welcome break from the snowfall for north central and northwest Nebraska because they're still into uh, in a winter weather advisory, blizzard warning, and winter storm warning for a good por portion of the western half of the state. And then there's this over here from Omaha East. There's that severe weather threat. Boy, there is a moderate risk from Des Moines east and then another moderate risk down to the south. So a lot of severe weather going to happen in this area over the next 12 hours. Not around here, though. It's going to get cold. That's about it. Middle and upper 20s, 28 degrees, increasing those clouds, decreasing the temperatures. Northwest wind at 10 to 25 miles per hour. High temperatures tomorrow struggle. Uh, again, we were at 91 degrees in Falls City. They're likely going to be around 51, 52 degrees tomorrow. So it's the 24 hour temperature change is going to be dramatic. We'll be in the 40s tomorrow, partly cloudy, much cooler. A little bit of a breeze out of the northwest at 10 to 25 miles per hour. But back to 60 on Thursday, that's a nice thing about April. It doesn't take long. You get one cold front move through and then we rebound very quickly. By the weekend, middle 70s for the Easter weekend, even the 80s. Look at that, three days in a row that we're in the lower 80s, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Not a whole lot of precipitation chances out there over the next 10 days. We really, really do need that. 
So hopefully this changes up a little bit, but there's a small chance on Easter, then another chance towards the end of next week. But overall, a pretty dry and relatively mild 10 day forecast. All right, thank you very much, Rusty. A negative day on Wall Street today, the Dow falling nearly 200 points. NASDAQ also down 63, S&P dropping 24 points. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, the historic... Finally tonight, a town in Pennsylvania is being taken over by peeps, those uh, squishy Easter time treats for the fourth year in a row. Easter time at Peddler's Village means a total peep takeover. Guests will find more than 130 marshmallow masterpieces currently on display from the hot hair balloon to home peepo to <laughs> Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. Anyone can submit their work of art in one of three categories inspired by peeps, including diorama, sculpture, or wall art. Well, at least it'd get nice and hard when you leave it out in the air. Right, exactly. And they dry so, out so fast. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get a final check of the <laughs> forecast uh, with Rusty. Are you a big peep lover? I, you know, it's anything Easter related. It's, you know, I'll, I'll eat anything yeah, once. Exactly. Do they melt in the heat? Like if I was to, in Fall City, it was 91. If I would have set it out on the sidewalk, would they have? We should put some on a cookie tray in the car. <laughs> Experiment coming. Oh, wait till it's Ooh. 90s around here okay. again. We're so doing that. Wait, we have to save peeps for that long. So they're going to be stale and then we're going to investigate and it'll, see if they melt. It'll be fine. It's, it'll be great. It's fine. It's going to be great. Uh, let's uh, look outside right now. We've got some sunshine and clouds. Well, the clouds are built in in Aurora. We've got uh, a little bit of a wind starting to pick up. You can tell us out of the north. The clouds are starting to increase uh, temperature wise. 
There we go. 59 in Lincoln. So we've cooled off almost 15 degrees just in the last couple of hours. 64 still in Beatrice. Columbus here at 42. Aurora at 39. Temperatures all over the place. And it's because there's a cold front sweeping through. Look at all that severe weather off to the east. Snow to the west. Look at all of those blizzard warnings yeah. to our right. north. Thank you, Rusty. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock. Have a great night. With the Channel 8 News mobile app, you'll be the first to know.